The Center for Military Psychiatry and Neuroscience is part of the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research. Uh, the mission of CMPN is to discover, design, develop, and deliver evidence-based solutions to protect brain health, optimize psychological well-being, and enhance performance and readiness. The RARE and CMPN has a very long and storied history. There have been uh, numerous uh, discoveries uh, that have uh, resulted from our research and uh, that are now being employed in a variety of different areas. We've had a long history of assessment of soldiers and their behavioral health and well-being. And what we aim to do is not only provide a snapshot for, for leaders and soldiers, but provide usable tools and or recommendations, actionable recommendations, not just here's how things are going, but here's what you might want to do about it. One of the issues that um, has recently come to our awareness is an acute stress reaction in the context of a combat-related event. And obviously when somebody's having an acute stress reaction, it's going to be very difficult for them to help themselves. So we really want to be able to turn to their battle buddies, to their teammates, to see what can they do to support that individual. So iCover is a peer-based support for addressing acute stress reactions in unit members. This is an opportunity to demonstrate the way in which psychology and mental skills training can be applied to a military context. The unique thing about our office is that we have retired non-commissioned officers and they help ground uh, the material in an Army experience. And so we're able to use uh, these folks and work with them as we develop curriculum and as we um, evaluate material to see, if, is this gonna work with this population? One of the exciting things about the work that we do is that we bring the latest and greatest in science to the soldier. And so what we're asked to focus on in our work is delivering pharmacological treatments that could help to mitigate some of these more extreme stress reactions if they persist so that we can keep people operational and performing in the way that they need to be in order to fulfill their mission, but also keep themselves and their team members safe. Currently, we're working on a project where we're actually working with different drugs that medics already are carrying with them in hopes of being able to repurpose some of these drugs and get them into the soldiers' toolkits much faster. Specifically, what I'm interested in, in doing is um, uh, developing strategies to increase the uh, restorative properties of sleep, that is to say to accelerate sleep's ability to recuperate. And particularly we're using um, non-invasive um, brain stimulation methodologies and two in particular, um, transcranial electrical stimulation with very weak currents and acoustic stimulation. We're really hopeful that you know, these, these methodologies can, um, can really enhance the recuperative properties of these limited periods of sleep. So here at Walter Reed Army Institute of Research, we apply integrative biology approaches to diseases of military relevance, uh, mainly focused on, on psychological health and psychological issues. PTSD is very complex and um, the scoring system is very subjective. What we're trying to identify is an objective way of predicting, uh, diagnosing, or even for prognosis for PTSD. What we, we're exposed to in the environment can make changes in, the, in our DNA methylation, in the gene expression. This will make us more prone to specific stressors. Can we use this information to predict the outcome or diagnose who uh, does have really PTSD and who doesn't? We do a lot of next generation sequencing, and that's not something that you would see in a traditional uh, behavioral neural lab, being able to work with these technologies that I would not otherwise be able to and expand those technical skill sets and theoretical knowledge and be able to fit that into the bigger picture of you know why it is I do what I do, why I'm interested in these things and keep moving forward. Our program is focused on both diagnostics and neuroprotection for traumatic brain injury. And when you when you think diagnostics or detection of TBI, that's where the biomarkers come in. Having a blood-based diagnostic that can actually not just detect whether somebody has suffered a concussion, but quantify the level of injury that they've sustained, and at the same time give you an indication of their recovery profile. We in blast-induced neurotrauma 
um, are looking to identify some of the uh, consequences of blast exposure and develop countermeasures to that. We are not just talking about what happened in the battlefield incidentally, but rather a lot more of the effects that we're studying happen in training ranges. I lead a team of investigators who conduct research spanning from basic physics of blast to the biomechanics underlying the uh, insult to the brain as well as to other organ systems. And then finally looking at some of the uh, neurobiological changes elicited by that blast exposure with an eye to developing countermeasures both in terms of therapeutic interventions and improvements in PPE. Many of our military and civilian and contractors are working on brain health challenges and other are working on neuroscience challenges. We go where, where the service member is uh, to get the data that we need so we can provide some sort of uh, improvement to their, to their readiness, um, to, their, to their performance. If your organization is not 100%, if they're not in the game, you're not gonna, you're not gonna shoot well, move well, or communicate well. All the things that we have to do in combat. If we can get our people right, if we can all be in the game, you know, 100% or as close to 100% as we can, if we know we can rely on one another and we build a level of cohesion internal to the organization that's strong, everything else is gonna be better. Being able to be on site and work alongside military members every day is just a remarkable reminder of why we're doing what we're doing. The scope of the research is uh, very broad and uh, really it's evolving as the needs of the military and the Department of Defense uh, evolve.